please write in your notes on a clean sheet of paper this topic rediscovering God's priority kingdom first we're going to be looking at understanding God's priority and primary interests what is God's primary interest what is his number one priority a few weeks ago I took myself aside got away from everybody and I spent 15 days at home in prayer and fasting I pushed away the plate and I sought the Lord and I had and listen carefully I, I wanted to know God what is your number one concern for your people and for the world I want to know that because I am being demanded all over the world to speak on behalf of God and it's important for you to never speak for someone who didn't talk to you and so I always make it a priority in my life to at the end of the year get close and intimate with the mind of God to pick up his mind and during those 15 days no food and just quiet solitary time with the Lord the Lord spoke to me now when you've been isolated for 15 days and didn't eat anything you think God would speak to you a big sentence but when the Lord speaks his deepest words come in short sentences all he said to me when I asked him what do you want what is your number one interest for the church for the world for the planet his answer was two words he says kingdom first that's all I waited and waited and waited and that's all I got he says kingdom first I had to go back as always because God will never speak anything that is not in Scripture and there it was exploding in my face Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 which is the passage that explains everything where Jesus explains what is God's priority and what is his priority as Lord and Savior of mankind but what I found interesting was he did not say that this was a priority for the people who are believers only he said this is the priority for the entire world every human and that was interesting to me because I thought that this would only be something we would be told but he said that demand is for every human being seek ye first everybody say first say it again first a couple of years ago I read a book about five years ago I read a book and one of my books that I had to read that month was written by Stephen Covey some of you have read his books his best-selling book is titled the seven habits of effective people how many of you read that book good good to see some of you reading it's a good book I encourage you to read that book matter of fact I read it twice And after I read that book, I was impressed at his content. And then he wrote a second book right after that that became also a bestseller book. And when I saw it, I automatically picked it up and bought it. And the title of that book was First Things First. 
Stephen Covey wrote that book. How many have read that book? Anyone read that book? One, two. Oh, Jesus, please help me. Okay. Can I suggest, three, can I recommend that you please go to bookstores and read? It's a good book. First things first. I read the book. As a matter of fact, I read the book in two sittings because I speed read. And I was impressed because in that book he talks about why successful people are successful and why they live at a higher level of life. It's because they live according to priorities. And then he talks about choosing your priorities for your life so that you don't waste time doing things that will not get you to where you want to go. In that book, he talks about the priority of family, the priority of self-discipline, the priority of diet, you know, very good principles. And when I read the book, I was impressed, but I wasn't surprised because everything he said to do in the book, I was already doing. It's a good book. However, when I was spoken to by the one who is greater than Stephen Covey, he showed me that Stephen Covey, even though he wrote an excellent thesis on priorities, first things first, he did not include the most important priority, and that is God's priority. What is God's priority and what is its role in your life? I want you to write these things down. First, let me start off by telling you what I've discovered over the last 51 years of my life are the keys to life. And everybody wants to know what the keys to life are. Here's the first one, and this is one of my more well-known statement, but I want to make it again, and that is the greatest tragedy in life is not death. There's something worse than death. The greatest tragedy in life is life without a purpose. In other words, it's more tragic to be alive and not know why than to be dead and not know life. It's tragic. So one of the keys to life is to discover a purpose or a reason for your life. Number two, the greatest challenge in life is knowing what to do. Knowing what to do. It is a challenge to try and figure out what to do every day and what you should be doing with your hours and your time. Getting up in the morning, jumping in a car, getting stuck in traffic, going to the same place every Monday morning, getting busy about all the stuff you're doing. Is it what you are supposed to be doing? That's the question. And what are you and I supposed to be doing? Key number three, the greatest mistake Please write this down in capital letters. In life is being busy but not effective. It's a mistake to be busy but not being effective. Everybody in this auditorium and watching this program around the world, you are busy. Young people, busy. Adults, busy. Old people, busy. And everybody's doing stuff. The question is, are you effective? And how do you know the difference between busy and effective? We're going to find out in these next couple of sessions. Key number four. The greatest failure in life is being successful in the wrong assignment. <laughs> All 
Write that down, please. The greatest failure in life is being successful in the wrong assignment. Nothing can be more frustrating than doing an excellent job on something you were not supposed to do. It's like getting an A on the wrong exam. <laughs> failure is not always failing to do something. Failure could be a result of working hard and doing excellent work. If after you finished, it was the wrong assignment. So success has very little to do with working hard. <laughs> do you know? A thief works hard. He got to saw them bars on the window. Sweating. Then he got to climb up and hurt himself to get in the window. Hard work, man. Then he got to fall down when he get in to get in the room. Then he got to try and squeeze the TV through the hole. Hard work, man. Fall down outside, bust a knee. You think, He's successful. <laughs> He's working hard. A prostitute works hard. When you go to bed, she starts work. And she's passed from hand to hand. Being cursed at. Slapped. Hard work. You see, working hard doesn't mean you are successful. So the greatest failure in life is being successful in the wrong assignment. You can't be worse than that. So one of the ways that you need to protect yourself from failure is to deal with the issue of first things first. First things first. Everybody say first things first. Write this down, please. Success in life is the effective use of time. Success in life is a result of the effective use of time. You are right now exactly what you traded your time for. That's all you are. So everybody in this room are the result of the same thing. How we use our time. If you use your time sitting on a couch and eating all the time, you probably see that you're fat, overweight, out of shape. If you don't exercise with your time, then you become a certain type of condition. That leads to number two. Time is the true measure of life. It took me a long time to figure that out. Life is simply time. When you tell me you are 50 years old, what you're telling me is you are what you use 50 years of time to do. So, you measure your life by what you do with time. That leads to number three. Very important. Write this down. Time is the currency of life. Say that with me. Time is the currency. What is currency? Currency is the medium of exchange that you use to buy things. Please listen carefully. So currency in life is time. You use time to buy life. Whatever you have in life, you bought it 
with your time. Whatever state you are in, whatever you lack or possess is a result of what you use your time to purchase. This is why they pay you for your time. It's called a job. That leads me to number four. This is more dangerous. <laughs> How we spend our time determines the quality of our life and death. How we spend our time determines the quality of our life and our death. Your time determines how you die and how you live. You know, I am right now whatever I traded my time for. If you are broke, it's because that's what you bought with your time. If you are wealthy, it's because that's what you bought with your time. If you are overweight, you use the currency of time to buy that. If you spend time sitting watching five hours of cable TV, instead of reading your Bible, now you see why you are spiritually weak. Can I make a statement you must never forget? Every morning, everybody in life starts off with the same amount of currency. 24 hours. At the end of the day, they all end up different because of the way they used their currency during that 24 hours. If you are smart and wise, obviously you spent some time reading books, listening to good tapes, or taking some studies somewhere because you don't just wake up smart. And if you are stupid, dumb, ignorant, you bought that. And you paid for it by the time you sat down watching five movies in a row on HBO with a bunch of curse words. That's all you are. Whatever you trade your time for, you become. It's currency. You buy life with time. So if you want to change the quality of your life, you have to change how you spend your currency. Time. Is this making sense? Okay. So, number five is more challenging then. Everything and everyone is after your time. <laughs> now, it's the only currency you have, and everybody's after it. And everything is after it. If I could stress one thing to you, my friend, it would be this. Protect your currency. There are some people who are after wasting your currency. They want to spend time. Everybody says spend. See, I told you it's currency. However you spend, everybody says spend. However you spend your time, it, you, you buy whatever you spend it on. And if you spend your time with a fool, you buy folly. People are after your time. You know, I, the older I grow, the less currency I got to waste. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you hit 40 and 50, you don't want to fool around no more. Don't fool with me. Can I hear an amen? Somebody who close there somewhere. See, because some folks, they just want to eat up your currency. Choose your friends carefully. Because a lot of them will waste your currency. Then everything is after your time. That is why I said this in the first service and I'll say it again. The most difficult button to press in your life 
is the off on the remote control. Am I right? Sitting in that house, every even when going to the bathroom, you can't stop. Because they keep coming at you with advertising and, and drama movies. And, and they say, now, you can switch between channels. They don't want you to leave. They, they just want everything must just take your time. You can sit down and watch TV and wet yourself. Because you can't go to the bathroom. Because you don't want to miss nothing. See, they after your time. I am afraid of cable television. Personally, afraid of Because it is a stealer. You know, robbers steal currency. That's a big thief. There are people who sit down for seven hours and being ripped off by a thief called Cable. And they are no wiser, they are no smarter, they are no more intelligent. They didn't grow spiritually, didn't grow intellectually. And when it's all over, the only person that won is the advertiser. Spending your currency. I want you to practice pressing off. Just go home and try it a few times. Just turn it on, click, count to five, and press it. Click, turn it back on, click. Count to five, time it, press it, click, and just practice. Practice how it feels to go off. They have proven psychologically that whenever you press off on a remote, there's a release that takes place in your physical body. Oppression. What do you spend your time on? They after it. Why am I stuck here? Some of you this year are about to connect with some people who are time stealers. Be careful. They come to derail you. Let me tell you something about time stealers. Time could be stolen not only by bad things, but also by good things. You could spend, everybody says spend, your time doing good things that are not right for you. So don't just think that bad is bad. Many times good is bad. As a matter of fact, most of the time, good is bad. Took me years to figure that out. How many of you got an assignment and you keep avoiding it? And you avoid it by doing lesser important things that are good. Because you don't want to start the main task of the complicated thing. So you keep procrastinating and every day you say, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And, see, and the things you're doing in places are good things, but you're not doing the right thing. So you are wasting currency. Write this down. And this is the most important one. The key to effective use of time is correct priority. The key to the effective use of time, my son, is finding the correct priority. Everybody say correct priority. You know, the Holy Spirit said to me, priority is not enough. Because you can create priorities that are not correct. In other words, I have a priority that I will drink coffee every morning. Well, maybe that ain't good for you. I have a priority that I got to have my smoke every morning. Well, 
is that, that's a priority, but is it a good priority? It's a priority to have a big meal at 10 p.m. every night. Is that a good priority? I wonder why your body's always tired. Because it digests while you think you're sleeping. See, priorities are not enough. So what we need to learn in this series on the kingdom is what is God's correct priority? First things first. Sit up with me. First things first. First things first. I think I'm going to end up writing a book on this subject. And it will be the other book that Stephen Covey didn't write. Steve, you might be watching this program, you know, I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, we speak a couple of times in the sim similar circuits, so, you know, I understand him very well. But I'm going to write a book called The First of the First Things. Because <laughs> what we got to do is to correct what the people have been consuming as being an answer to their problems. The answer to their problem is not what he gave them even though what he gave them is good. According to Jesus, it's not correct priority. Very important. So, what's the key to using your time effectively? What is it? Correct priority. Correct priority. Not just priority. Correct priority. All right. Let's talk about the priority of priority. <laughs> Why is priority a priority? Number one, priority is priority because preoccupation with priority preserves and protects life. When you set the correct priorities in your life, it actually protects your life. Tell me why. Because it protects your life. You don't waste time doing things you shouldn't be doing when you get the correct priorities in your life. Can I suggest to you that every morning you wake up, there are a million things you could do that day. Am I right? So you better know by some miracle which among those alternatives you should be doing that day. Some days I am frustrated. Very few, but there are those few where I didn't get done what I set out to do. It makes me angry. And sometimes it's because people, people's interfered with my day. They came in unannounced. Oh, Jesus. Let me tell you something. Some of the worst curses in life it's people who drop in. Anybody got any drop-ins? I just drop in on you to see. Don't drop. Don't drop on me. Okay? Because you see, <laughs> the older you get, the less drop-in time you have available. Is there anybody out there to help me by myself here? See, because you ain't got time. You see, my life is so precise. Every hour of my life, I have it all charted out. Even my rest is planned. So if you come in and you think I ain't doing nothing, I rest in. I don't need you to come here. It's planned. Very important. Therefore, you and I need to be aware that when you prioritize, you protect your life. It preserves your life. Preserve is important, eh? You know why most of us are tired? Because people drain us. Oh, I'm talking to myself. People come to you and they keep bringing negative things, negative things, bringing all their problems. I mean, 10 people in one day and nine brought a problem. Now you got all them problems in your head. So now you're drained. They don't preserve your life kill it. That's why Jesus Christ used to run away 
The Bible says he used to run away by himself. He even hid from the disciples. Many times it says he went aside alone. He didn't even want Peter around him. Talk too much. There comes a time when you've got to be very jealous of your time. And the older you get, the worse it gets. Am I right about it? You begin to wonder, you know, these folks ain't got nothing else to do but bother me. I got things to do in life. I mean, you got things to do in life. Come on, teenagers. You got things to do. See, and you got to be careful because there are people who don't respect your currency. Destroy it. Number two, correct priority is the principle of progress. Please write that down. It's very important. When the Holy Spirit told me this, I almost went into shock. Because I thought I figured this out until he told me. He said, look, he said, you do not know progress until you know priority. Progress is a result of moving in the direction that you were intended to move in. Which means that movement does not guarantee progress. I was telling the story in early service. I got lost in Florida. Anybody got lost in Florida driving? Yeah, I got lost in Florida. I got lost in Florida years ago when I first started to drive there. And uh, I missed the exit. I didn't understand them. And I ended up close to Tallahassee. Lord Jesus. Drive for hours. I'm like, something's wrong here, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> I saw the sign, Tallahassee, 300 miles. I said, boy, yeah, I must be halfway of Florida. Now, watch this. I was moving. I was progressing on a road. And the road was good. It was paved. The signs were beautiful. The exits were all labeled. And I was moving. But I was moving further and further away from my destiny. See, I'm not impressed with your work if it's the wrong work. I'm not impressed with your business if it's taking you to the wrong destination. Don't be jealous of busy people because you ain't know where they're going. Come on, watch me now. Say amen. amen. <laughs> Jesus said, she said to the Pharisees, he says, he says, you're always learning. <laughs> And never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Going to school don't make you smart. That's what you're talking about. You get a degree in what? Boy, I tell you, you got to, everybody say correct priority. See, there were many exits along the road while I was driving, but none of them was the correct. Were they bad exits? No, they were all good. But were they right? Not for me. See, good is not always right. I'm getting at something you're going to pick up next week. Don't miss next week, okay? But I'm laying the foundation here. See, one of the number one problems in the world, please, I beg you, listen to me. Lord, help me. The number one, the number one problem in the world of Christianity is me. I'm talking about 2,000 years of history. We have been busy. I went to college. I got a degree in theology. I keep repeating this because I think it's... It, see, let me tell you something. <laughs> When you realize that you've been doing the wrong thing for a long time, you just get mad, you know. Come on, y'all be honest now. Remember when you, when, <laughs> do you remember when you figured out that what you was doing was wrong? Remember how you felt? First you felt mad at yourself for being so stupid. Then you became angry at the person who made you think it was right. That's what happened to me, spiritually.
So I went to college, and I have, I got a degree. Thank you, son. The proper reward be upon you. I got a degree in theology. Listen carefully, young people, because some of you are going to Bible schools. I don't want you to waste your time. I went to theology, theological seminary, got a degree in theology. They made me read everybody. All the theological theories, all these different uh, theological thinkers, and one of the main ones they had me read was St. Augustine. Because they say that he's like kind of the father of modern theology. Now, St. Augustine was a Catholic priest. And this was in a <laughs> evangelical, spirit-filled seminary. And they made sure I memorized St. Augustine. And there was not one class, not one, on the kingdom of God. I graduated with a theological degree. Theology. Come on, look at me. Theology. Theo means God. Ology means study or to know. Theology. Theology means to know God. So I got a degree in the knowledge of God, and they never gave me one class on the only thing that Jesus preached. What's my point? They gave me some priorities, but it was not the correct priorities. I grew up in the Bahamas. When I was born, I was sure. When my mother let me out of her womb, I landed in a pew. All my life, my daddy and mama was in ministry. I landed in a pew. So I went to all of the experiences. I, I, I landed in the Brethren Church. Then we moved from there. We went to the Baptist Church. Oh, the number one Baptist Church at that time too. Bethel Baptist Church. A pastor, thank God, H.W. Brown. I mean, for years we were there. Then we moved, you know, and went to the Pentecostal Church, Evangelistic Center. I used to play the piano in all these churches. A little boy, you know, involved. And then from there we went to the Assemblies of God. Went to the Church of God. Ladies and gentlemen, there was not one sermon on the kingdom. And it's the only thing that Jesus preached. They preached on everything. But no one preached on the kingdom. Matthew 6, 33. Can I say it? Seek ye, don't read it fast, first. Say first loud. First. Say it again. First. He said, look, whatever you're seeking, don't seek deliverance. Don't seek faith. Don't seek baptism of the Holy Spirit. Don't seek giving. Don't seek prosperity. He says the first priority. is the kingdom. How come they never told me? Why? Because they graduated from school just like I have. And you can only teach what you know and you can only impart what you've been taught. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Listen to me. This is strange, Pastor Richard. My secretary will show you hundreds of emails and letters of people. Matter of fact, I am going through a struggle right now in my personal life because these emails and letters are from people all over the world who heard a tape or a CD, watched a program or read my book on the kingdom and they're all saying is the school open? And they tell you what school they want. We want
want to come to learn the kingdom. These are from bishops, pastors, elders, deacons. These are from seminary professors. Why? Because they realized they don't even know where to go to get the information. It makes me afraid. Could it be that what we're doing here is that important? My question, did the church progress since Jesus left the earth in Acts 1? The answer is sad. Can I just show you something that you won't believe? Okay. You won't, you won't believe it, okay? Get your Bible. I'm show you something. Turn to Acts chapter 1. I just want to show you this. We can deal with this in the next couple of weeks. So uh, I'll use mine. That's fine. Acts chapter 1. Everybody here? Are you learning something this morning? Okay. It won't be long, but listen to this. Acts chapter 1. I want you to read this again. Jesus, after the resurrection, he only had one thing on his mind. Now, I want you to read this for yourself, okay? So look over on the Bible, because if, if you don't read yourself, you won't believe it's in the Bible. Acts chapter 1, he's resurrected from the dead. He's about to leave the earth, and it's his last meeting on earth. His last meeting. And here's what he says in Acts chapter 1, verse 1. In the former book, by the way, Luke is writing this, okay? Luke was a physician. He was a doctor. In the former book, O Theophilus, I wrote about all the things that Jesus began to do and to teach. Verse 2. Until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. Then he left. Now what instructions? Look at verse 3. After his suffering, that means his death on the cross, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. Keep reading. He appeared to them for over a period of 40 days. What was he doing? Those days, he spoke to them about one subject. I rest my case. The seminary never spoke about it once. He preached it all his 33 and a half years on earth. Went to hell, rose again, and started preaching it again. Why? It is the number one priority of God. Now you look, when a dead man preach it, you know you better preach it, eh? Not just a living man, one who died, came back. He said, look, I got nothing else to say. Now, if you read the next, verse, the next of those verses, you'll see some problems. Because the disciples still didn't get it. They thought he came to establish a nationalistic government for a little group of people called Israel. He had to rebuke them. He said, I came to restore the kingdom of God to the whole world. Not to a group of people. And this is not a nationalistic message. This is a global message. He had to rebuke them. We still missed it. Have we progressed? See, progress, follow me now. Anybody getting this? I feel the anointing boy tell you. You can feel it, you know, when it's stirring. Listen, don't miss this. Progress is measured by assignment, not by activity. So if he told you, can I give you what he told us? Matthew 24 verse 14, you read it. It says, and when this gospel, not what you feel like preaching, when this 
gospel of the kingdom is preached into all the world as a testimony to every nation. He said, when you do that, then the end will come. I wonder why he ain't here. He's not coming because Bin Laden is out there. He ain't coming because of a tsunami or an earthquake. He ain't coming because of some hurricane hitting New Orleans or Freeport. Stop preaching garbage. He said, I'll come when my people yeah. preach the right message. What's that message? The kingdom. Now, progress, eh? How we doing? Now, how we, how, how we doing in the world? Now, I done told you my life. I live a short time so far on earth, 50 years, and I hear it once. I don't know what church you came from. I don't know where you go to church. I don't know anything about you. But I dare you to tell me, did your pastor preach the kingdom? Yes, sir. Every time you went there every day. I don't know me. <laughs> See, that's a serious question. Because you just read the assignment. Everybody say first things first. Write this down. Correct priority protects time. That's number three. When you have correct priority, it protects you from wasting your time. Okay. Listen. And I want you to go to the meetings with me sometime, okay? I want you to just sit in the room. Because I took some of, some of the mentors with me. In the meeting I had this past week. I was in a meeting last week. Just this few days. With some of the top people that you know. I mean top people you see on TV every day. We was in a small meeting in Dallas, Texas a few days ago, and there was a planning meeting you know, to talk about what's happening in the church. I sat there, and everybody who you knew was there. Here I am. I'm the only person sitting there, uh, you know, from this part of the world. And they were talking about, you know, the church in America and the church in the Western world and, you know, the church in Europe and all the deep stuff. And they got into all kinds of stuff. They start discussing, you know, who's apostle, who's not an apostle, who's a prophet, and who qualifies for a bishop. And I'm sitting there quiet. I say, I ain't getting in there. Why? This ain't, this ain't what this is about. And then eventually they realized I was quiet. And, uh, you know, the chairman says, Jack Hayford was the chairman. He said, Dr. Monroe, you got five minutes. Please tell us what's on your mind. And I hesitated for a long time because I said, this ain't going to be nice. And I simply reminded them about the kingdom. And uh, it was a big discussion after that. The discussion changed. And I sat there. You see, let me tell you, it is difficult for you very difficult for you after you've been renovated revered respected honored by people for so many years for you to have to face the fact <laughs> that's tough so I don't expect these people to just you know handle this Let me tell you why. Because of that statement right there. See, after you've been a professor of theology for 40 years in a seminary and taught thousands of students uh, and suddenly you are wrong. <laughs> you can't change overnight unless you are like Nicodemus who had sense. Even if you got a sneak in the night, for heaven's sake, face the music. It's tough. So what they normally do 
because of the time factor is they try to attack you of course they can't succeed because you can't argue with scripture so they try to discredit you by some way and it doesn't work I think the worst thing in the world is self-denial you know just be, not being honest you know this I see this you ever heard people say this yeah I know that's true but boy you know I was brought up that way <laughs> child I know true but I was Baptist yeah I know that's true but you know I was Catholic yeah I know that's true but you know I was seven I, I true. see and that's true but what are you telling me you're telling me, yeah, God, right, but I got something that right now is better priority than God. Because I can't change. I'm too old, they say. See, Nicodemus is a smart fellow, man. Nicodemus, you know, was an old man. Jesus was, Jesus was 30 years old when Nicky met him. And Nicky heard him preach the kingdom. Nicky says, I wrong. <laughs> so he snuck away from the Sanhedrin council. Went 2 a.m. in the morning, everybody sleeping, knocked on the door. And Jesus said, yes. He said, sir, I is reverend. I am the pastor of the synagogue in this town. And I don't know what I talk about. How do I enter the kingdom? I am already in religion. Tell me how do I enter the kingdom of God? Jesus said, Nikki, it's not difficult. You got to be born all over again. And Nikki still didn't figure it out, eh? He said, I got to go back in my mother's womb. Jesus said, my God, you got a PhD and can't figure out I don't mean that. It's a doctor of the law. Some of them folks who you think sharp, you'd be amazed. How could he think Jesus meant that after all them years of study? Jesus said, no, 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 you don't go back in your mother's womb. You have to be born with a new spirit. You got to get a revelation. He says, and then you, if, except that happens, he says, you cannot understand. That's what the word see means. The kingdom of God. He said, you got to have a revelation from the spirit of God to understand the government of God. Nicodemus wasted a lot of time but at least he was honest to spend the rest of his time doing the correct priority anybody ready to change the priorities see I made my decision that's it it's too late for me I'm staying with Jesus number four correct priority protects your energy when you do the right thing you don't got to worry about wasting your energy no more that's what makes you angry eh? when you work hard on something that you're supposed to be doing and you realize I wasted all my energy. Imagine how much money they spend on seminaries and robes and turbans and crosses, you know, and all of the uniforms. I mean, think about it. This is a lot. I mean, as energy, you build buildings, you get classrooms, you get desks, and you know, you think about it, you go, yeah, but all the building and the classes and the resources and the furniture was right, but the lesson was wrong. I hope you all help me. It's rough. You've been ordained and didn't get the message. See, it's not just enough to do things. You know what? My number one goal in life, I don't, you know, hey, I'm just like you, man. I'm going to join you, okay? But one goal I have in my life is to always try to do it right. Not what's good, you know, what's right. I want to do the right thing. Because I don't want to die wasting my time. People come to the church, and they visit us, and then they leave, go to some other church. Don't bother me. Because when they finish with the flower pap and the soup, I ain't ashamed to say it. When it's all over, I got to come back to the kingdom. Not to me now, to the kingdom. 
But you see, the kingdom is the only thing that satisfies the hunger of the spirit. Christ says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for to them belongs the kingdom of heaven. If you want a hoop and holler message, please don't come here. You could hoop when you get the kingdom revelation. I don't mind hooping that. But I ain't going to work up no sermon to appeal to your emotions for you to feel good for five minutes. And I don't want you to get blessed temporarily. I want you to get, listen, I don't want you to get something from the cupboard to eat from. I want to give you the key to the house. Come on, say amen. I want you to know how to go get it all the time. I decided years ago, I don't want no more blessings from God. I want God. <laughs> I want the God of the blessings. Can I hear an amen? Once you get the God of the blessings, the blessings are added just by being with him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And these things, please don't miss next week. I'm going to show you some things you won't believe. Write these last two down. Number five. Correct priority protects talents and gifts. Oh, there's a big one, eh? You know, you're so gifted and talented. I mean, here you are, a gifted communicator, but the message is wrong. Talented singer, but your song is wrong. You ain't singing the kingdom. And so now when I turn television on, especially when I listen to Christian products, Christian material, I was listening, you know, listening for the kingdom. And I hear things like, I'm climbing up the roof side. Listen. <laughs> Is that you, Minister K? K? <laughs> Minister K, you shouldn't be in this session, boy. It can be rough from now on. Because you got to go sift through all that stuff to try and find something that is the message he said to put on the airway. By the way, in this meeting that we had in Dallas, and I'm saying it publicly because it's going to be a public statement in Charisma. You'll see my name there because of my contribution there. But we were talking in the meeting about how the gospel is being diluted to positive thinking. Boy, I was sitting there going, yes, they're getting it. You ain't supposed to come body of Christ to get motivational speeches. You're supposed to come here to get government policy. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. You're supposed to get constitutional rights explained to you as a citizen of a kingdom. I wonder how many real disciples we have in the world. Disciples of Jesus. Or we got followers of gurus. A guru who makes you feel good. And then when the next problem comes, you feel bad again. So you got to go back and get your fix. Jesus says, no. Seek ye first the kingdom. Number seven, number six. Correct priority protects your decisions. When you get the right priority in your, in your heart, decisions become easy to make. When your priorities are correct, you can say yes and no easy. Because you could tell when something is not in line with the priority. But if you don't know the priority, then you go to this buffet and collect all of these different messages, all these different feelings, all these different things, and just kind of go around from place to place and church to church and, you know, conference to conference and place to place and just collect all this stuff and you never heard the real stuff, the kingdom. I have a tough job because you see everything I'm saying now going around the world and I just want to say some things so bad. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen I love you. I love you. I don't want you to waste your time 
You too old to waste time. You know what I mean? When you're trying 50 years like me and you, we ain't got time to put food in this. We got we to gotta do right. We got to do it right. We got to get it right. Anybody want to get it right? We got to know what is the right thing? What is the priority? Christ was clear. Seek ye first. That's the first thing to seek. <laughs> See, decision making is critical because, you know, the greatest challenge I have in life is the fact that a lot of demands are upon me. You know, I get over 600 invitations that come in and, and try to seek my life every year. And they want me to come and all expense paid all over the world. And I look at them and I got to go, you know, boy, I got to balance my life. I can't just go because someone invites me. I got to decide what is my priority. And what do they want from me? The kingdom of God is all I'm after. Friends, listen. If you don't know what the chief priority is, decisions become very difficult because you can't navigate between the alternatives. <laughs> Seek first the kingdom. When you go to a conference or you're watching television, when you, when you, when you turn to something, listen for a while to see if you hear the kingdom. If you don't hear it, you change. That's how I am right now. It's crazy. When I go through songs and trying to buy music, I'm listening now, man, because I can't just, you know, I, I can't. Kingdom! He said, I must seek it. This year, no jiving. First things first. How about you? If you don't do it, you're disobeying Jesus. Seek ye first. His priority is very clear. Let me close with the definition of priority. Correct priority protects discipline. When you get correct priorities, it disciplines your life. You know what you don't do. You know where you shouldn't go. You know who you shouldn't be with. See, when you get priorities in your life, a discipline comes upon you that lives your life for you. There are certain people and things and places I cannot get involved in because of my priorities. Without priority, you are open season to anything and anyone. This is why Jesus Christ could not join the Christian council of his day, called the Sanhedrin Council. These were nice people, but he couldn't join them because they were not focusing on his priority. So he couldn't join them. Finally, correct priorities simplify his life. My life is very simple. When you get correct priority, life is simple. Hey, kingdom first. That's all it is. Kingdom first. Everybody say, kingdom first. See, anybody talk to you, you just know them for a while, and you say, kingdom first. They want you to do some stuff, you listen to them for a while, and you go, no, kingdom first. If it interferes with kingdom first, I'm not interested. If it takes me away from the kingdom being the first priority, I'm not interested. It makes life simple when you have priorities established. And so one of the greatest blessings of priority is priority. So we talk about priority. What is priority? Number one, priority is the principal thing. What is the principal? Christ was telling us the kingdom is the principal thing. It's the principal thing. Number two, Priority means putting first things first. Priority means that you place at the front that which is supposed to be in the front. Seek ye first means that you put first things first. 
Number three, priority means establishing the most important thing. Establishing it. When you're going to make a priority of something, it means that you make it an established fact. This is my number one import. It's the most important thing to me. Christ says, seek ye first. And number four, the word priority means primary focus. Christ says your primary focus should be kingdom first. Primary focus is kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Seek the kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Uh, <laughs> and number five, the word priority means placing in order of importance. To make a priority of something means that you place it in the order of importance. So you, so you decide what's supposed to be first, what's supposed to be second. Have you noticed, my friend, that Jesus never gave us second? <laughs> Far as he's concerned, this is all. You get this right, everything else is okay. My son, listen to me. What do we preach? You look at, look at the church for the last thousand years. What do we preach? We preach communion. We preach faith. We preach prosperity. We preach deliverance. We preach baptism in the Holy Spirit. We preach water baptism. We preach almsgiving. We preach all this stuff. We preach, should women preach? I mean, all this stuff we preach. And Jesus said, there's only one thing to preach. Let me put it another way, okay? Because you're going to get it. Jesus never preached on prosperity. And we got a whole theology of it. Jesus never preached on deliverance. And we got churches named in it. Jesus never preached, thank you, he never preached on faith. We got movements in it. He never preached on the baptism in the Holy Spirit to the public. We got schools on it. Ready for this one? Read my lips, read my lips. He never preached born again. He only mentioned it once. It was not his message. And he mentioned it to one person. At 2 a.m. in the morning. That was it. And yet, we have the entire denominations built on born again message. You see, when I say progress, have we progressed? We haven't even gotten the message. 2,000 years later, we still doing something. We moving toward Tallahassee. If you get my meaning. Doing good things. Don't get mad now. It's good. Church is good. Conference is good. Ministry is good. Good, 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 good. But when you go to them, what do you get? I'm not, I'm not speaking today in criticism. I'm weeping. Because Jesus simply said to me, kingdom first. And he hasn't heard it yet. Selah. The word priority also means playing, placing highest value and worth upon. He says, place the highest value in your life on the kingdom. That's the first thing you must do. The first thing in your life should be the kingdom of God. Now, some of you are here visiting and you don't know what I'm talking about, so you got to come back for the next three weeks, okay? <laughs> yeah. Because you see, 
You got, I got to explain to you what a kingdom is, explain to you why it's valuable. As a matter of fact, Jesus gave an example one time. Oh, it's so sweet. He said, the kingdom of God is like a man who was looking for pearls. He was a pearl dealer. And it says, Jesus, and he went about looking for pearls, you know, traveling around the world, and he was buying pearls. It says, and then he came upon one. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. And the Bible says, Jesus, and the man sold, watch this, all he had. That means even the pearls he had. And bought that one, Jesus said. Such is the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something. Everything you're looking for is in this one pearl. Give him a praise. The value, the worth, all of it is in this one thing. The kingdom of God. Last one. Priority means first among others. Seek ye first. There are other things you could be doing, he says. But this is number one. Okay. You heard the scripture read today, and I did not consult my son here who did such a good job before I even preached this message this morning and he had already gotten revelation I didn't even talk to Derek Adams wrote that wonderful song we never talked God's trying to say something and in case you don't hear me he spoke it through him if you didn't hear me he spoke it through Derek and he can keep speaking until you get it Kingdom first. Say it. Okay. Now I want you to look at me. Look at me. I want to show you something. Close your Bibles, please. Just look, look at me. This verse, I studied this thing. I mean, I tore it apart. I can't wait to teach. Listen, this verse. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added. If you read the context, it starts by an interesting statement, the whole passage. Jesus says, Why do you worry? I want to close on this now. Listen. Jesus said, Look, I know what your priority is. And he listed them. He said, your priority is, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? How shall we live? Pay our rent? Buy a car? Gasoline? You know, health care? He says, I got you figured out. And he said, don't lie to me. That's your priority. Is he right? Yes. Why are you going to work tomorrow? Not because you trust in God. You're going to work tomorrow because you want... Eat, drink, buy clothes, pay rent, keep your light on, and keep your cell phone working. He got you figured out. He said, that's your priority. He says, you don't live any. Watch this now. Next statement. Is not life more important than these things? No, Jesus, no. You ain't a behavior. <laughs> You don't understand. You need to live here. He says, is not life more important than food? The answer is no. Raymond, is not clothing? No. He has us figured out. Why do you worry what you will eat? Do you know what he just did? He destroyed our prayer list. What do you pray for? Be honest. Oh God. The rent coming up. You got two days. Oh God. School opening. 
kids need this, need that. Oh, God. Do you want to hear his response today? Listen. Take no thought. I just figured this out, you know. I figured this out one week ago. Just one week ago. Got a revelation. I never seen it before. The opposite of kingdom is worry. Watch this. He says, why do you worry? That's how, that's how the whole passage opens. It ends. Therefore, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things you worry about will be added. See the connection? He said, the reason why you got high blood pressure right now, stress, why your arteries are all clogged up, why you got a growth in your breast, a cyst in your womb, why you got prostate cancer and your sugar is high and why your eyes are darkened and why you can't control your life. He said, because you are worried. The number one disease in the world proven by scientists is stress. 98% of all diseases are a result of stress. Heart problems, palpitations in the chest, tightening of the lung, asthma. They say it's all stress. And stress is another word for worry. And so he says, why do you worry? About what? What I will eat, what I will drink, what I will wear, how I will go. He says, man, people have two jobs. Come to the kingdom. Seek first 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 the kingdom. And all these things. What got you worried? Things. Things. So, I guess if you're smart, You'll probably do what I do. I got a choice. I could worry or seek the kingdom. <laughs> Next week, we're going to study that a little bit. He says, if you worry, you can't change your height. If you worry, you can't grow your hair back. Okay? He, talk about all this. he says, if you worry, you can't do nothing. You can't change nothing. And yet, there's the worry that causes you to be sick. Seek you first. Kingdom.